Hey everybody, my name is Jason. My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. We thank you so much for joining us today. We are going over the laws of Yahuwah and what we need to be following every single day. So if you are joining in, you are learning the laws with us as long as, as well as we are learning them. Right. And so I actually did a listen of yesterday's and you guys need to scoot forward and I need to scoot back. My loud booming voice is overtaking all of you guys and it's really loud when I talk. And so I need to talk from across the room. And you guys need to get up to the mic, and you guys need to speak into the mic. And we can never, ever hear Nicole, so she's a mouse. So anyway, here we are. We appreciate your time. We have a three-foot table, and we extend our three-foot table to you guys. And we are um, studying the law, statutes, and commands of our creator. And Eli, with your voice properly into the microphone, tell us a little bit about what the law, statutes, and commands mean to you. You are 15 years old. Um, 15 years young or whatever they could say. Tell us a little bit about your life with them. How does it change your life? What do you, what is, what is your life different using the law, statutes, and commands? Well, one, we know what to do, what is right and what is wrong so we do not sin. And we get blessings from it. We get a day of rest. We get many different things from the Torah. So you're saying to me that you do not sin. No, we sin, but we know what is right and what is wrong. We know what we need to repent for. Ah, so we know what is right and what is right. wrong. We know it's transgression. We know we don't want to transgress, but when we do, we need to repent. Sometimes it's accident, sometimes it's not. And when we and when we know it's not, we need to repent and apologize for whatever we sin for. Yeah, absolutely. And so tell me how it is, all of you guys, how has it changed your lives being in the Torah? Well, we are, we are different from the world. We are set apart. We don't watch TV. We don't date. We... We do very. We live our lives according to how Yah wants it to. According to we walk in His ways. We don't walk in the ways of the world. We are a very peculiar people, as the Bible states. We are doing what most people don't. We rest on the on this on Shabbat. We don't go out and mow our yard. We don't go to church and pass around the money plate. We don't go to a restaurant. We stay home. We rest on that day, and we basically just read our Bibles and spend time as a family. So, do you believe that your lives? have been cursed or blessed by the Torah? I would say blessed because without a seventh day, I'd be completely exhausted. I'm exhausted towards the end of the week, and if I didn't get a day where I can rest and get some sleep in, then I would be completely exhausted going into the first day on Sunday again. And most people don't take those days off. They continue working, they continue doing stuff, and they don't rest, so they must be extremely tired. Yeah, so what are some blessings that you guys have received because you guys are in the Torah? I would say, yeah, who always provides when we need it the most, he always feels like he provides for us. Yeah, absolutely, and without a shadow of a doubt, we are um, we are living by the example of I guess poverty is cool, and if you're living in poverty, it's okay. And um, you know, we don't know where we're gonna get our next meal. We do not know if we are going to ever see green vegetables again. We don't know if we are going to ever have a, another store run. Um, we are we live net zero. Um, we live out where there's the. You know, after the, the 2019, 2020 stuff, there's no way to get jobs and there's no way, there's no way to really do any of this stuff. And so we have, we have been living by hand to mouth and it is a, it is interesting. It is interesting. Do you guys fear starvation? No. No, yeah, who will provide for the Israelites with manna? He will provide for us if he so chooses. Even though we are unable to actually go get food yeah, if we wanted. We can't provide for ourselves. Yahuwah says he does not let his people like go without food. Have you gone a day without food? No, no we have not. Yahuwah always provides. Yeah, he always provides. And so does it worry you guys that we don't have food? No, because if y'all wanted, he could turn the rocks around us into vegetables and do lettuce. He could turn anything into food that we needed. Or he could have it delivered by the crows. He could have something delivered to us. And... Uh, that's how he rolls. He does. He provides for his people when they are in need, and he's not going to let us down. We may go hungry for a day, we may go hungry for a week, but he's always going to provide for us at the end of the day. Yeah, it's slim pickings around here, but that's cool. This is um, this is the way of the world, and this is you know we're actually trying to set. And I've been I I put this out as an example to people because it's coming to your house, right? And um, you know, a gal told us the other day that we shouldn't eat in bad fruit because we're all going to food poisoning. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get everyone to understand that a famine has been orchestrated across the world and we are all going to be very, very hungry. And so this is why I, I try to put this up as an example. And, um, you know, we try to live by this example. And it is, it is I guess, as an adult, it is, is spooky, very spooky times. 
Um, literally, if we wanted to go buy a block of cheese right now, we, we could not buy a block of cheese. We couldn't, we, we'd have no, there's no way to do anything. If somebody, if we ever chose to go to the hospital, there's no way we could ever go to the hospital. We would never go to the hospital regardless. Um, so there's a lot of things in life when you don't have any kind of cash that are, that are cut off. And so we are trying to live by this example of, um, you know, I guess being jolly in times of nothing. And the times of nothing for us started literally in, in 20, 2020. And it's just been going, it's been rougher and rougher and rougher until there's, there's literally no ability if we wanted to go buy food, which we would, we'd go buy some fresh vegetables right now. We, get, we got, the, the, the shelves are empty, but we are still jolly in this. We still have the faith and we know that our creator will never, ever let us down. All right, gentlemen, thank you for that. I appreciate it. All right, so let's go into this real quick and... I don't I don't have a lot because we haven't fleshed this out exactly, but we the last couple of chapters that we did um, we it took us a day to figure out that there are a ton of commandments in there. At first, um, let's talk about the first the chapter prior to this a leprosy um, chapter and okay. um, or what's the one right before the leprosy one? Leprosy. Uh, it was chapter eleven with uh, the food, with the dietary laws. Yeah, dietary dietary laws are eleven, and so we have that, and so we have that as commandment fifty two: obey the dietary laws. But we have not fleshed this out. At the bottom of this, so these are all the verses for them, and it's literally the entire chapter. Um, but what we have is um, dietary laws for sure, and then we have the laws of the hygiene laws. Now the last two chapters literally uh, where it dealt with leprosy and then it dealt with men and women cleanliness that is all stuff that we can actually do today there's all sorts of stuff right we should be separated from our wives during a monthly cycle we should um if if we suspect i mean let's just go down this road boys if we suspect if i looked at, because we, you know we are out in the middle of a jungle if you guys end up with a um like a sore on your arms and I would have to use the Torah to figure out, you know, what it is. And if you guys had like a big old, uh, crater in your arm and the hair starts turning white, um, that could be a very bad thing because we would know that, you know, we should be separated. So these are all things that we should absolutely do. Like if we are, if we are to the point where you can't find doctors, you can't do any of this stuff, which here we are, um, if you guys end up with this kind of stuff and the, 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 I guess the hygiene is bad or whatnot and we end up owned, we have to learn how to separate ourselves. We have to do it as they did back in the days. And that would be um, all of the hygiene laws, right? That's the, um, what, what do we have? So We, we have separated ourselves from the camp. We yep. ha it talks about if you have what, ha certain things like you usually get checked out by a priest, but we would have to try to figure this out ourselves, see if we are unclean or not. Yeah, we'd have to figure this one out. And if we are unclean, then we'd go, uh, we go bath at evening. We would sit outside the camp for like seven days. And if we're not healed after that, we will be considered unclean. Then we would need to separate ourselves probably permanently from the people. Yeah, you, you would be, if not, what would happen, Kate? You would basically infect the entire camp. Yeah, you, you, we'd all, we'd all die from it. It would be unfortunate. We'd, we'd literally have to have you guys outside somewhere i don't know where but it would be the saddest thing it'd be, ever it'd be terrible to have one person go away but it's better to keep more people alive than one because that one person will kill everyone else yeah that would be quite the sacrifice right that would be quite the sacrifice you know separating ourselves but these are the kind of laws that we are going to flesh out and that, that is in commandment 53 and i is there a commandment 54 no it's a 53 and 53 is all is basically two chapters so inside of the two chapters, we will be fleshing this out. And so um, there are commandments. So we have a, a ton of commandments from the leprosy day and from the the, um, the separation and the men uncleanliness and female uncleanliness as well. All right, so let's get into this, folks, and let's see what we have. Oh, first of all, before we go into this, I want to um, a big a big shout out to Ori Pup right here. Um, I, I don't know if this is a male or female, but... Uh, you know, I, I would guess I'm going to take a stab in the dark that this is a female. And I'm saying this. I, and I'm, I say it's a male. You think it's a male? I do. I was going to say this because I've seen that it is more of the females that are tougher, that are able to get rid of the coffee, than it is the males. And uh, I just got to, you know, shout out to Fearmonger out there because uh, he says he... Uh, 
He says he gets anor- or what's not anorexia, insomnia. but he gets insomnia. He gets insomnia when he doesn't drink coffee, and I just don't think it went long enough. He didn't get it out of his system. But the females, the the gals, and so this is a guy. Big shout out to Ori Pup, but he said kicked out the coffee and going with my tea myself. Yeah, bless. So um, brother, sister, much love to you. Good job, fantastic. And then I wanted to touch on this one. This is by Sayo Erased. And um, I didn't know if this is a male or female, but it is, a, it is a female. And so it's our dear sister. And she said, my husband and I use two twin beds. And I've seen a ton of old people. I don't say old people. I don't, I'm not saying you guys are old or anything. But my grandpa and grandma used to have separate. They actually had separate rooms. I don't even know what that was about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Someone's but, in the doghouse. Yeah, it, it, it did, they, they had separate rooms. And so... Uh, but they did have separate beds as well, and I, I definitely know it wasn't because they are keeping the Torah. I think it was because they probably weren't keeping the Torah, and they were probably at, at odds with each other. But um, this is what she said, and everyone should listen up to this because this is very, very good. I have mine, and he has his. No uncleanliness. During a woman's time, she is to rest. Also, after giving birth, a woman should stay at home, away from others, and rest. We need this rest, period. She is not sinful because she is having her woman's time, just unclean and right. that you know we've discussed that before and i you know i don't want any of the females out there to think we're dogging on anybody out there i i think the females are the most most complex most beautiful creatures out there and you know yah has done a, a tremendous job with building an incredible system so yeah you're it's not you know it's not a bad thing it's it's just a thing so last one here came from dear sis clarissa, clarissa cotton she came in from outside where she was mowing and sprinkled all my coffee grounds on the border of my yard to keep pests and weeds away. Not missing to drink coffee. Water has been just great. Yah's blessing to all. Shalom. And yeah, um, we are we are definitely now, I don't want to say where we are. Um, yeah, maybe we are. Maybe we're addicted to non-caffeinated tea. Because uh, I drink my tea and my wife has a little bit of... Um, cinnamon oil and she pops it in the top of it everything i have i can't have any sugars at all at all or i'm on a death's door i literally am i've trashed my body that badly so that if i if i eat any sugars i'm i'm owned my blood sugar goes to the roof and it's over so i have no sugar in anything at all and um so uncaffeinated sugar free tea with a with just a little bit of cinnamon oils inside of it is absolutely rocking and um so for anybody out there um that was the answer that i had and i just kind of sip on that and it, it it saves the day i don't know if it saves the day but it's really continuing all right let's get into this guys um uh, i need to break into my what handy dandy split screen. my handy dandy split screen and so as we go here um gentlemen how you guys doing good good, good. you guys okay yeah okay you doing all right a little more cheerful a little not a little grumpy this morning no. everyone's a little grumpier in this I'm house not. Jade's the only one who's not grumpy, and I can't get too close because I, I talk too loud. And if I go try talking a little softer, I don't know if that's going to work out because I'm boisterous, I'm loud, and um, I guess my pipes are huge because they go crazy. Okay, Leviticus 16. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before Yahuwah and died. And Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, Speak unto El Aaron, your brother, that he come not at all times, into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. So one thing I'd like to point out here is that um, Moshe's the man. Moshe's the man. And Yah did speak to El Eron before. And I find it kind of crazy here that he doesn't speak to El Eron. He spoke to his man, the Moshe. So um, I think the reason here for this is that... Uh with Aaron, it says after the death of his son, so he's basically unclean. He might have like carried his sons out, and he might have had some uncleanness with the dead body. No, no, no. He he had the uncle, the uncle, the, and the uncles, kids. Carried. But there was probably some uncleanness with burying the dead. There was something in it where he didn't, where he wasn't clean enough to talk to Yah personally, like Moshe was, where Moshe just kind of was running the whole thing. And it seems to me that they were um, coming into the holy place whenever they wanted to. So this yeah. is a time that um, that that's cut off. So all right, let's continue on. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for an ascending smoke offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen belt and with a linen turban shall he be attired. These are holy garments. 
Therefore he shall wash his flesh in water and so put them on. And he shall take of the assembly of the children of Yashrael, two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for an ascending smoke offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take, take the two goats and present them before Yahuwah at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for Yahuwah, the other lot for Azazel. Okay, I'm going to stop right here, and you guys probably know why. Um, what in the world is Azazel? Who's this? Azazel was the head of the fallen angels. He taught them weapons and fire and like all sorts of sorceries. He was like the leader of the fallen angels that basically led everyone astray. That He's like the evilest one of them all, of all the fallen angels. So um, in Enoch, it talks how he's like somewhere in the desert, like buried under all these sharp rocks, and he's just living there. He's just like stuck there so no no light at all i don't know if yah has like a i don't know pity on him and goes and feeds him once a year or something or how that works why he sends him why is there why is there a goat why is there a goat that goes to azadale once a year they just i don't know i didn't understand yeah that. Uh, yeah i don't know either but so the version that we have like in the king and also the niv it says scapegoat but um, in the proper translation it gives the actual name of the scapegoat and azazel um, it wasn't just the dude that led people astray. This dude hatched the plan to breed with women and to do all of that. And so it was his and his, you know, he's the one. He's like, you know, I'm afraid that if we don't all make this commitment here, that let's you know, do it as a team. Yeah, let's do it as a team. And so he got all of the evil angels and like two hundred of them or something like that. There was a, there was a, I think so. I can't remember. There were like two hundred that came down on the mountain. They were called the Watchers. Yeah, and so he, uh, they were, you know, uh, very evil angels, and so here we are. All right, so, but anyway, yeah, we don't, we don't know why, you know, Aaron cast two goats, one, one goat, and then the other one is a scapegoat, and this is yet more stuff we don't know. All right, verse nine, and Aaron shall bring the goat upon which Yahuwah's lot fell, and offer him a for a sin offering, but the goat on which the lot fell to be for Azazel shall be presented alive before Yahuwah to make an atonement with him and to let him go for Azazel into the wilderness. So they always use scapegoat. So I think this is the, I, the right translation would be Azazel. Um, why? I don't know. But he's like the master. He's like Hasatan's right-hand henchman. He's like... Except he's stuck. Yeah, he's stuck in some stuff where Hasatan's will find himself at some point soon as well. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before Yahuwah, and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Okay, so you guys, what, what is he doing? So basically he's taking like fire off the altar, taking then, coals. then coals, and he has to take incense and bring it to Yahuwah. Yep. Once again, who wants to like smell it? Like, like I don't know. Do you put the incense on the coals afterwards? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Aaron's getting re-proclamated in yeah, okay. or what's going down. Okay, and he shall put the incense upon the fire before Yahuwah, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. Okay, so the cloud of the incense. So basically, it's a fire of incense, and it's covering the mercy seat. So something about a, like a smoke screen, I guess, is what you would say. Um, and if it's not there, then he might die. And so I guess if that fire goes out, he needs to like kindle that bad boy back quick. You throw some logs on that at all times. Yeah, well, these are coals, so they should be burning. But it's like he's on the coals. I think he's just tossing some sort the, of fragrant stuff. The incense. The incense. Is it, is it like a wonder if incense. Powder? Is, it could be anything. It'd be a leaf. Incense flammable. Huh? Incense flammable. Incense is like anything. It could be a leaf. It could be a flower. It could be whatever smells good when it's burned is what an incense is. And so it's not like flammable or anything of the sort. But he has a, a basically, you guys know what the coals are like. Um, mm -hmm. So he has like a little, uh, what they said, a sensor, like a little cup of them. And yeah. then he drops the, in, the incense on top. And so those would burn a long time. As long as he has incense on top of that, that would burn. So he just wants to make a smoke screen. All right. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. All right. So he's sprinkling blood on top of the altar. Favorite number seven. Yeah, number seven. There we go. Sevens. It's all about sevens and fifties. 
Okay, so 15. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that is for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Yashrael, and because of their transgression in all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the assembly that remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. All right. Do we have any idea what's going on here, folks? So I think it's like some kind of like a, uh, what is it, like a uh, repentant type thing. So the, he's right before on 15, he's, he's take, he kills the goat, right? The, the goat is dead. He brings the blood into the veil. He brings it within the veil. So he's crossing over. So he's between, he's right next to the altar. And he sprinkles it on top of the altar and before the mercy seat. So he sprinkles it on top of it and before it. So Mine says on the lid of atonement. Right, that, which is the mercy. That's right. what they call the mercy seat. So it's the lid, right, the top. So he sprinkles it. It probably hit the uh, the two seraphim or the two angels that are sitting on top of it. All right, so 16. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Yashrael and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the assembly that remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. So it's basically a group forgiveness. Like this goat was basically to like... I think it was for his sons. I think that's why he's... Yeah, and Nicole says... She I think, think he's doing it for his sons like because they sinned in God's house. And so this is all a, this is all a separate atonement? A separate mm. sacrifice here? This is for the... Uh, what does this say at the top of this? Verse 17. The day, the day of atonement. This is Pat. This is like the day of atonement in Yom Kippur. Okay. I think it's like for like everybody's sins. This basically covers everyone's sins for. All right. Like so this is the day of atonement. The year, I guess, for like their past sins. Okay. Right. So this is this is a day that we would fast. This is a day that we would fast and we would keep this. Um, but he's it's different than all the other times because this is on the day of atonement. We go into the we go by the veil, mm -hmm. and we actually sprinkle blood on the the. The, this day was like the Holy of Holies when Yah was absolutely in their midst because everyone would cleanse themselves and they'd basically be extremely holy all they would do that day was fast and basically be close to Yah as they could be. Do we know that people fasted? They said yeah. to afflict their souls. Afflict I mean, soul, unless, unless, they're, unless they're like beating themselves up or somehow. or like. Dude, I'd totally love to afflict your souls. <laughs> uh, one thing I do know is that soul and appetite are the same words in Hebrew. Soul and appetite? All right. Thanks, Eli. Hey, buddy. I didn't know you were there. Sorry. Just saw you. All right, here we go. All right, and um, yeah, so here we go, 18. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before Yahuwah and make atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. I think you missed 17. Did I miss 17? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, I did. Sorry. Thank you. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the assembly when he goes in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out. And have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the assembly of Yashrael. So the whole so, congregation of Israel. Of Yashrael. Yeah, and so I would say these guys probably have to be cling before this. I probably I, I think this is just a separate type of sacrifice. Okay, and he shall go out unto the altar that is before Yahuwah and make an atonement for it. Okay, so he basically walks outside, right? Because the, mm -hmm. the sacrifice thing is outside. Um and make it a and take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it up on the horns of the altar round about. So we're only dealing still with one, one dead cow or one dead ram. Right, right. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Yashrael. And when he has made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the assembly and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Is that the Aziel's goat? I thought they released this one. I don't know. Oh, they're about to release it. Okay, and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. What? A fit that, man? That's what my sister is. Was... Well, oh, why? I mean, that's basically like, I believe a fit man would be someone that is clean, like one of the priests that are clean. That is uh, ready for Yah. Like what does it say? Players. A cling man. It says a fit man. Like he's fit for the job. Uh, yeah, you put you put like. Are a, we talking like someone that's like shredded? You wouldn't have a little tiny feller who like the goat kicks him in the head <laughs> and runs all runs, <laughs> runs off into somewhere uh, else, right? NIV says the care of someone appointed for the task. Someone a care appointed for the task. It's not going to be a 
beta male. It's going to be a tough guy, probably, because if you screw this one up and somehow the, the goat's going wild or something, I'm sure it just takes the whole ceremony to a, a knot. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I, I don't know what that means, a hand so, of a fit man. So basically, he had to put all their wickedness on that goat. He had to be basically say all the sins of the people. Like, did he have to recite? Go, like, I don't know what kind of like curse that is for that goat or something. But it ends up going to Azazel. He lives? Yeah, it lives, but it goes to Azazel. How do you know it goes to Azazel? That's what they said. Is it the goat that goes to Azazel? I don't think it feeds Azazel. They just, they, it goes it, to Azazel. It's for Azazel. Where does it say it goes to Azazel? Did I miss that? It I, says, and the other lot for Azazel. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, is it, is, 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 is it set for him to eat? Or Here's what it says. Here's what it says. But the goat on which the lot of Azazel fell is, caught, is to, to stand alive before you to make atonement upon it, to send it in the wilderness to Azazel. All right. Maybe so it goes. I don't know what it is for Azazel. If it's a food, a pet, I don't know what he wants. Maybe well, he's eat. buried underneath of his thing. Mine in parentheses says for dismissal. Right, for dismissal. Right. I mean, that's what it would be. be run off of the thing. I don't think he's going to run to Azazel. Maybe he would. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Azazel, I don't think he's. I, dude, he's a bad dude, man. He's like. In his cave, he's stuck and with sharp rocks smashing him. All right, so anyway, we need a fit man to send this guy away so he isn't kicked in the head by the goat. Push the goat out of the and the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the assembly and shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall wash with his flesh with water in the holy place. And put on his garments and come forth and offer his ascending smoke offering and the ascending smoke offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people. Okay, so the clothes, his old clothes, like the holy of holy clothes, he, he, he's gone, right? Mm -hmm. He took them off and now he's, I don't know what kind of garments he's on. He's in. It didn't, I mean, you would still think he would be in priestly garments, so I don't think he just went down to his uh, scrubs or whatever. Um, I don't know. Anyone? I have. I don't know, he doesn't say he like puts, he put, I don't think he puts the holy garments back on. I think he, maybe he has another set of holy garments, maybe? Maybe. Because he has, I think he, he has. put the, on his garments, he doesn't say like the, like the anointed garments or anything. Like, because like, when he's, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're flipping blood somewhere, you're going to get blood all over you. But, it's just, it's just the way it is. Um, okay, I don't know, 25. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. And he that let go the goat for Azazel shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. Yeah, so that goat did go to Azazel. And he he that let go the goat for Azazel. Isn't Joe, he who sent away the goat to Azazel? Or maybe it's because the sins Azazel. of Azazel, what Azazel had taught them. It's all, it's, it's everything that is maybe going on is because of Azazel. Maybe it doesn't mean directly to Azazel, but rather to put the sins of Azazel. Yeah, but why didn't they put the sins on and kill the goat? Uh... uh that's not the, yeah, I don't know. I don't, put, get the sins away from the camp? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yah's ways. All right. And the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place shall one carry forth without the camp and they shall burn in the fire with their skins and their flesh and their dung. And he that burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward he shall come into the camp. Here's something different as well. I, I don't remember them having to burn their clothes when they take the stuff out. Right? Is right. anyone with me? Yeah. Anyone remember this? And he who burns them, I think. And he that burns them shall wash his... Oh, I, oh, he I didn't... Yeah, clothes. I, his I'm illiterate, I guess. Okay, he that burns them shall wash his clothes so and bathe them. whoever did the sacrifice, right. the, the uh, sacrifice for... I'm That's slow. <laughs> okay. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether yeah. it be for you, whether it be for one... Of your own country or a stranger that sojourns among you. So we got a command. Yeah, we got a command. Okay, we got a clear command. Something that is is absolutely. So this is uh, commandment 54? fifty-four. Fifty-four. Okay, so that will become fifty-four, and that is the day of atonement. Okay, for on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before Yahuwah. Is the Shabbat of rest unto you? And ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. So I said a law forever. Statute, law, statute, yeah. same. A law it's, forever. So back to twenty nine. It's a statute forever. It's in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month. 
This is why we absolutely have to get our calendars right. If we don't have our calendars right, then you're missing all of this and it's not, it's not happening. Okay, 32. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead shall make the atonement and... Sorry, I just smelled things burning. I guess it wasn't. Sorry. Um, sorry, it's killing it. Let me start over 32. And the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead shall make the atonement and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. Okay, so holy garments go back on. Okay, 33. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the assembly and for the altar and he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the assembly. Now, why is he making an atonement for the sanctuary an atonement for the tabernacle and atonement for the altar? Probably because it's been blood all over it. It's been yeah, dead he's on got, it. he's got blood on it. So now life is in the blood and so now he's he sanctified it but he has to cling it. So and it has to there has to be a... a there, you know, that's the thing about Yah is it's... It's the same way for everything. The judgments are the same. He, he, he's, very, he's very precise in what he does. All right, 34. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Yashrael for all their sins once a year as he did as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. All right, gentlemen, anything? So this is a day to kind of repent for your sins throughout that year. If you sin throughout that year, it's like try to get that repentance you even if you sin, you do a slaughtering, but this is kind of like a more of a more uh, full uh, repentance. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's, it's the right word, but if uh, it's yeah, it's a it's a different it's a day of atonement. So I mean, what is it exactly? It's a. It's a, I feel like it's more of like a complete repentance, like a complete like a it's uh, like, forgiveness. It's like it's like it was like the uh, like before you it's like kind of like Yeshua before Yeshua. It like basically forgave all of our sins, all of our transgressions. Like for, for like whatever that entire year of transgression was, it would like renew, give us a new slate for the year. Yeah, interesting. Okay, I don't have anything more to add to this. Does anybody have anything at all? I uh, I don't think there's anything other than that. Um, tonight we will be live tonight at the Youth for Yah. So we tune in if you're a youth or if you're a parent and just want to learn wisdom. We will be going over Proverbs 14. Yes. All right, guys. All right, so everybody, thank you guys very much for spending some time here in the Word of Yah and for working with us and reading with us, and we truly appreciate you. We have much love for everybody out there. And, um, yeah, shalom. I think that's it. Shalom. 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 All right.